Good afternoon, everyone. David Evans predicting a three tenths degree C drop starting right now as our sun finally turns back on after two weeks of absolutely no activity. Yet this entire activity cycle takes us back into solar cycle five, way back in the late 1700s. And the reason our sun is behaving so erratically is it's an electric star. Small voltage shifts will be showing changes as this regulates through the photosphere. Solar polar fields behaving strangely. That would be expected when you have a DC current driving the sun in the solar magnetic sheath. Also Greenland ice increasing. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT2030 and join me on a previous episode where I talked to Joe Seidowitz about our experiences buying Arabica coffee down in Myanmar. With our sun elapsing 17 days with no sunspots, it's the longest stretch of a blank sun since 2010, but that takes us right near the end of a solar cycle. This is going to put our current solar cycle 24 way down into the eight year range, three years shorter than normal. The increase in galactic cosmic rays on order of 3% globally over the solar cycle is very noticeable now with these intense rainstorms. Along with this, David Evans predicting a significant cooling of three tenths of a degree Celsius starting in 2017. He also talks about a notch delay hypothesis of about a half of a solar cycle before the heating or the cooling of the electrical nature of the sun takes place in the following solar cycle. If you haven't been watching the news, our sun has gone blank for 17 straight days. That should not be happening until solar minimum on the regular 11 year cycle. And as it's panning out, this solar cycle is going to be one of the shortest in three years hundred years at eight years or so sunspots are back slightly but if we look at the ESA also CISLO I linked that below you can take a look showing the exact same thing running from the fourth jumping up the sixth all the way through the 20th now if we compare these solar cycles we are over solar cycle 24 far to the right side we got to jump back into the late 1700s with solar cycle five and six to find anything that matches this decreasing pattern at this intensity. And one overlapping the cycles, we are far below solar cycle five. Definitely looking at a Dalton type minimum coming back at the very least cooling possibility. From this point forward with the 60 year cycles of ocean cooling and warming, it's going to be real interesting because the ocean cycles are going cold. Our sun is going into a decreased activity state. And even just in a visual sense, when you match up the butterfly solar rotations, I'll let you use your own eyes to see what era of time we might be repeating again. Back to David Evans, further in the article on Joe Nova mentioning the TSI, which is total solar irradiance being affected. And also this is definitely going to have planetary effects of temperature. So my prediction is also 2017 will not be the warmest year ever. If you jump over to Dr. Roy Spencer's site, you can follow through the last year or so. He does an incredibly good job of showing you the UAH satellite based temperatures. Watch this one's going to keep dropping it. And the IPCC powers that be will have no explanation to explain the cooling when we should be continually warming. I wonder what excuse they're going to come up with. Because I've already seen that they're blaming snowstorms on global warming. Now I'm just curious how they're going to explain an entire Earth cooling to be announced. We'll see what kind of weird excuse they come up with, but guarantee they're going to come up with some excuse based on CO2 for cooling the entire planet now, even though it was warming. Now these solar cycles are weakening significantly. And this drawdown, you can see that's not going to extend out into 2019 and 20 as they predict. It's going to go from 2009 to 2018, which is going to take it in eight and a half to nine years, which is a couple years shorter than the average. These solar cycles can range as long as 13 years or as short as eight when we're in a grand solar minimum. And look at that, we're going into something right around eight 
right now. There should be a lot more questions asked and debate and just general discussion about where our climate's going based just on repeating cycles of the sun. We need to be talking about it. Even looking at solar cycle 22 and solar cycle 24, that teal line right down the center is when the new solar cycle starts in intensity in the ramp up to solar max on the regular 11 year cycle. But you can see the huge difference between intensity ramp up in the beginning of the solar cycle from the 1980s until this current era. Now let's talk about the electric sun. IPCC will talk till they're blue in the face about CO2 warming. Let's talk about the electric universe. I'll bring you over to Wall Thornhill. I linked below here. You can check out stars in the electric universe. Talking about the photosphere forming a double plasma sheath. And this tufted sheath are those little granules that you will see on the sun's surface when you get close up on the satellite views. A small shift in voltage is enough to modulate the power output that passes through the tufts. And this regulating mechanism is for all stars that have a photosphere. You're going to see changes in intensity. The UV is going to increase. And a lot of people really believe the actual color spectrum is going to change in our sun. A lot of people are talking about the sun appearing more white. If you want to look at it as a solar transformer, these magnetic fields vary. And this is a screen grab from Donald Scott in his book, The Electric Sky, The Solar Transformer. This explains the magnetic field reversals because the sun is a DC power input system that acts like a transformer and you have varying DC current driving the sun. When there's an interruption in this electrical frequency, x-rays are measurable to show the changes as well as the magnetic field on the sun. So what does that mean for you and I? These x-rays in the variable stars blink in and out. It's more like a galactic circuit powered through these Birkeland currents that feed from solar system to solar system, galaxy to galaxy. And the most interesting fact about it is all the heat and light from the sun is constant to within one tenth of one percent. And that's how much of an effect it has on our planet. Back to David Evans here talking specifically about TSI as an indicator. Electric field on the sun, here we go. TSI down starting to really fall off. And what's interesting here, when we come out to solar cycle 24, why do all the charts end right around 2015? Why is there a two year delay in the information coming off of this? Also erupting volcanoes. I'll bring you back to 2016. This is a great peg of time right here. You can measure forward or backward with how much activity every grand solar minimum there's large volcanoes going off. John Casey in his book Upheaval specifically talks about volcanic eruptions and large earthquakes during grand solar minimums. We need to be preparing for that right now due to loss of our current modern infrastructure. There's so many anomalies going on. IPCC tells you that Greenland's melting into infinity, but all we need to do is jump over to DMI. And here we are, Greenland ice increasing. This is the ice sheet mass balance on the surface increasing. Also galactic cosmic rays increasing as well. Now how to read this chart is where you see the lows at below zero at minus five, minus 10, minus 20. Those are the solar maximums. Anything that's above zero, those are the solar minimums in the regular 11 year cycle. And as the sun goes into its minimum phase, it affects the magnetosphere on our planet, which allows more galactic cosmic rays to come in. Looking at this information for the last 30 years, we're not even at solar minimum yet. And if you take that over to the right side to 2017, we are nearing and going to eclipse anything in the last 30 years in terms of galactic cosmic rays. Absolutely, this induces more cloud cover. Have you seen torrential rains and read about massive floods and all-time snowpacks all across this planet this year, unusual weather patterns. It's all attributed to these changes on our sun as an electrical star. We need to be talking about this grandiose changes coming to our societies. These grand solar minimums in history, 
are always a reset button for global society in terms of population, economy, technology, and agriculture. And I don't know why the IPCC will not let us debate this in their forums. If they're gonna have these global meetings talking about climate change, they need to open the doors to other explanations for why it's changing far faster and far more intensely than anything CO2 can do. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please jump over to my website, oilseedcrops.org. I'm starting to host up there different agricultural solutions, whether it be indoor farming or different types of greenhouses, along with some different news on the site. And I do want to thank every single one of you for sending so many posts, comments, and suggestions all through the social media streams that I'm building up right now. More to come so we can all get ready for this event because it's here.